Yankee go home. That's the message from Niger's junta to the some 1,000 American troops stationed in the country. In March 2024, Niger made news when it became the first African country to end military cooperation with the United States, signifying a dramatic shift in geopolitical dynamics. U.S. authorities are currently negotiating with Niger's military administration in an attempt to save their presence and military facility in the country. However, the conclusion of these negotiations is still uncertain, raising concerns about the future of U.S. influence in the Sahel region and across Africa in general. The United States' waning influence in the Sahel and throughout Africa is becoming more obvious, spurring efforts to maintain strategic ties and partnerships in the region. Despite the difficulties in retaining its foothold, the United States is hesitant to abandon its influence totally and is looking at ways to persuade African leaders to join its cause. Engaging with regimes notorious for corruption, human rights violations, and repression demonstrates the difficulties and compromises inherent in geopolitical maneuvering. The visit of U.S. military commandos to one such country emphasizes the strategic necessity of securing African alliances, even if it means siding with governments with questionable human rights and governance records. While the United States struggles with its declining influence, the dynamics of power and influence in Africa continue to shift, posing both problems and possibilities for international entities attempting to establish their interests in the region. The recent visit of U.S. military officials to Equatorial Guinea was an intriguing development in international relations, especially given the country's notorious reputation for political oppression and human rights violations under the leadership of President Tidoro Obiang Numa Masoko, who has been in power for over five decades. While the term visit may imply a pleasant contact, the officials' presence was far from recreational. They arrived to offer humanitarian aid and financial support on behalf of the U.S. government. The United States is interested in establishing and strengthening ties with the leadership of Equatorial Guinea, which is located in Central Africa. Despite concerns about President Teodoro's autocratic administration, the U.S. sees cooperation with Equatorial Guinea as a strategic opportunity to increase its influence in the area. The donation of humanitarian aid, described as the most recent attempt to court President Teodoro, highlights the delicate balance between humanitarian relief and geopolitical manipulation. Commander Michael White, the defense attaché to the United States Embassy in Equatorial Guinea, expressed optimism that the aid delivery would pave the door for future collaboration between the two countries. Similarly, U.S. Ambassador David Gilmore expressed hope that the delivery of medical supplies will act as a catalyst for future collaboration with the Equatorial Guinea government. This approach represents the United States' complex approach to interacting with countries with questionable governance records, which involves balancing humanitarian concerns with geopolitical goals in fostering diplomatic ties and strategic alliances. Ordinarily, this engagement between the United States and Equatorial Guinea is not supposed to be a bad thing because it's normal for countries to seek engagement with each other. However, for a country that supposedly prides itself on pushing for democracy, human rights, and anti-corruption, the fact that the United States is willing to work with a regime that is the complete opposite of what it stands for just because they want to maintain a military foothold in Africa proves to the world how hypocritical the United States is. Before we get into the hypocrisy of the United States, consider President Teodoro's corrupt and brutal dictatorship. Equatorial Guinea is Africa's third smallest country, with a population of approximately 6 million. Equatorial Guinea, like most African countries, has abundant natural resources, especially oil. Interestingly, this small Central African country is one of the most rich in Africa, with a GDP ranking of 31st in the world and a Human Development Index ranking of 9th in the continent. However, 70% of the country's population lives in poverty because the government and the country's elite control more than enough wealth for less than 2 million people. The problem, as in many African countries, is with the leader, President Teodoro Obian. Following Equatorial Guinea's independence from Spain in 1968, Francisco Matias Nguima, who had previously held many roles during colonial administration, 
was elected as the country's first president. He ruled with an iron fist for the following 11 years. Equatorial Guinea was subjected to widespread repression, purges, and executions during his reign. According to some estimates, one-third of the population was either slain or forced into exile. Maitia's government is usually recognized as among the world's most violent and tyrannical. After Matias ordered the deaths of several family members, his nephew, Teodoro Obian, a top military officer at the time, staged a coup and overthrew him in a brutal coup. Since then, President Teodoro Obiang has ruled Equatorial Guinea unopposed, making him the Teodoro's authority was initially thought to be more humanitarian than his uncle's. But as time passed, it got more violent and authoritative. Even though it is a democracy and corrupt, there are opposition parties, but it is commonly known that President Teodoro wields absolute control in the country. Every election held in the country has been controlled and rigged to keep the president in power. In a government that claims to be democratic, President Teodoro is effectively a life president. Reports about human rights, extrajudicial killings, torture, harsh punishment, arbitrary arrest, and political imprisonment by the state are documented in detail. It also uncovers widespread corruption at all levels of government, particularly at the top. Despite the fact that the country's wealth is more than adequate for the population, President Teodoro and members of his inner circle continued to build personal fortunes from the earnings connected with monopolies on all domestic commercial endeavors, as well as timber and petroleum exports. In 2003, President Obiang told his country's residents that he was obligated to seize complete control of the national coffers to prevent state personnel from indulging in corrupt acts. After making this ludicrous declaration to his compatriots, the president deposited more than half a billion dollars into more than 60 accounts held by himself and his family at Riggs Bank in Washington, D.C. The U.S. only fined the bank $16 million for allowing him to do so. In 2007, Obiang was accused of diverting public monies to finance private residences and other luxury for himself and his family. The U.S. Department of Justice accused Obiang and his son, Theodorin, of appropriating hundreds of millions of dollars through corruption to buy homes, private jets, and luxury cars in the U.S. However, the matter was concluded after Theodorin turned over roughly $30 million in assets to the United States. Between 2011 and 2012, the French and American governments seized Obiang and his son's possessions, including houses, wine collections, and supercars. Swiss prosecutors seized 11 of the younger Obiang's luxury cars in 2016, including Lamborghinis, Ferraris, Bentleys, a Bugatti, and a Rolls Royce. In 2021, France seized $170 million in Theodorin's assets, including a 101-room home near Paris Arc of Triomphe. Theodorin's ostentatious consumption has not been altered by these seizures. He continues to spend millions of dollars on a lavish lifestyle while requesting aid from the United Nations as Equatorial Guinea's vice president. Yes, you heard that correctly. President Obiang appointed his son, who wants to live a life of luxury, as vice president of the country. Obviously, he is preparing for his son to take over when he decides to step away from the presidency. Despite the fact that everyone knows Teodoro Obiang's presidency is corrupt, authoritarian, and far from democratic, the U.S. has opted to disregard this and form a partnership with them. However, it is the same country that dispatched its senior officials to Niger and the United States. Isn't it hypocritical to tell them that the only way to continue its collaboration with Niger is for Niger to hold an election, indicating a move from military to civilian control, and to end any alliances with Russia and China, both of whom are undemocratic countries? But this shouldn't be shocking. After all, the United States has before abandoned its so-called principles of democracy and human rights in favor of its own interests. In reality, democracy and human rights are only practiced when they benefit the United States. And for now, the United States is interested in countering China and Russia's influence in Central Africa. It was reported in 2022 that China intended to create a military facility in Equatorial Guinea, and the United States has subsequently attempted to woo the president of Equatorial Guinea. So the sole military base in the country will be that of the United States.
Following the February donation of $24,000 in supplies, including infant formula and first aid kits, the Army issued a statement stating that U.S. forces collaborated with the government of Equatorial Guinea to achieve this engagement, indicating long-term cooperation between the two countries. And for now, the United States is interested in countering China and Russia's influence in Central Africa. It was reported in 2022 that China intended to create a military post in Equatorial Guinea, and since then, the United States has been attempting to woo the president of Equatorial Guinea, so that the only military base in the country will be that of the United States. Following the February donation of $24,000 in supplies, including infant formula and first aid kits, the Army issued a statement stating that U.S. forces collaborated with the government of Equatorial Guinea to achieve this engagement, indicating long-term cooperation between the two countries. Hopefully, it all ends one day. What are your thoughts? Let us know in the comment section below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video.